Welcome to my solar addiction. Today's video. Your inverter may be killing your batteries. Did you know your solar inverter could be killing your expensive Life Power 4 batteries or lithium iron phosphate batteries? Even if everything looks fine on the screen. Today we're going to break down what is called ripple current which is a hidden danger to your expensive batteries caused by your inverter, which most companies don't even talk about. As a matter of fact, I had no idea that this was a problem until I ran across it just doing research as a solar addicted person trying to find as much information as I can about this energy storage system that I have. And hopefully one day get a return on my investment because my batteries will last long enough and my equipment will last long enough. And I found this in research trying to increase the longevity of my system. So what is a ripple current? Let's look into it. When I first found ripple currents, the first articles, it was about electric vehicles and how this ripple current could cause a problem with longevity of batteries in EVs. There were several articles like this applied energy article. It goes into the details of how the charging system works and where the ripple current would actually occur as far as charging the DC battery with an AC source. And it's basically like noise or something they kept describing it as. It was degrading these batteries to a pretty extensive <laughs> amount. So I, I've started getting worried about that. You know, I'm like, they even said lead acid batteries would have a problem with this ripple current or this noise in the charging of the battery. So I kept doing some more research because I really started getting worried about my batteries and it costs quite a bit and it's a big investment. Some of these charts that I found, like this one, says that with lithium ion batteries at 120 hertz, the ripple, ripple current could actually cause some serious damage to your battery and shorten the life significant. Okay. So then I wanted to know if it was just lithium ion, if it was just an EV problem. So I started digging into it a bit deeper. Was it a problem for Life Power 4? There was a couple of hints, but then I found more. So I did find some articles about battery longevity as it relates to the lithium iron phosphate batteries like I have. Um, there was some mention of ripple currents. Uh, this Eagle Eye article white paper uh, was talking about the charging ripple current effect and how it could damage batteries. There was several more on the damaging of Life Power 4 batteries as a result of ripple currents. This article in Eagle Eye showed how ripple currents increase the heat in the batteries, which is not a good thing, especially if it's sudden increases in heat. Um, goes into more details about um, how the lower the frequency, the more damage it occurred. So that was an interesting point because it's not all frequencies. Some frequencies is not so bad. So they all even had an article about the charging waveform and what it should look like and what percentage of ripple is acceptable and things like that. And I'm like, man, I never heard of this ripple thing. And then I come across this article that's directly to what I was worried about, which is the effect of low frequency current ripple on the performance of lithium iron phosphate batteries, energy storage systems like Dave has in his house, like you have in your house right now. Have you ever heard of ripple current? I know I haven't. It was a new thing to Dave. Get Ripple, the bright new drink with that ring-a-ding flavor, Ripple. Ice cold Ripple is the new drink for lively people. So, why is this a problem? Well, let's look at what this Ripple current looks like first before we get into why it's a real problem. So this is a, a picture that would be a representation of what you would see on an oscilloscope if you were monitoring the charging of a battery with an oscilloscope and a probe. And you got two waveforms here, the blue line right down the middle here, folks. That blue line down the middle 
is pure DC charging, which would be ideal. Okay, no ripple in the waveform at all. The orange lines, as you can see, is showing a ripple current, which is more of a real world what the, the uh, charging current would look like on an oscilloscope. Uh, but we hopefully won't have the, such an amplitude as this one. In other words, the waveform would be smaller, still have ripple, but not quite as extensive. Okay, so that's what it would look like on an oscilloscope. So why is this a problem? Let's look at it. So here's a flow chart that shows basically the how the ripple current gets into the system. It starts with the inverter charger. Okay, the charger is trying to charge the batteries. And if it's a smooth DC current, like we saw in that previous illustration, then it would be no problem. But with ripple, it increases the heating. If the ripple current is the right frequency, a low frequency, it would increase the heating, which causes faster aging well, due to a higher impedance uh, and capacity fade would be reduced. Okay, it would be increased, I'm sorry. It would shorten the battery lifespan and reduce the cycle life by 20 to 50% shorter. That's significant. It also causes chemical stress, uh, SEI growth and lithium plating, which is always bad for your batteries and could, that's how they usually die at the end because of too much of that stuff. So on this chart, we're showing the effect of ripple current on life power for batteries longevity. Uh, if we look at the chart here, um, it shows how ripple frequency and ripple amplitude impact life power for batteries not just the frequency. So longer, low frequency ripple between 10 and 300 Hertz causes the highest degradation. And then the higher amplitudes between 10 and 20% accelerate the, the wear significantly as well. So if you have both of them, that's really bad. And then the higher frequency ripples above 10 kilohertz is much less damaging, is not really something to really worry about. Okay, so but what is that, what is it? I mean, this, this ripple current is basically, if we wanna put it into simpler terms, it's unwanted AC noise riding on top of the DC charging current. Okay, instead of that smooth DC blue line like we saw, okay, we're gonna get that up and down waveform showing that ripple, and that could be a huge problem for the longevity of our battery. So I wanted to show you guys um, the highlights of all the papers I went through so that you understand why it's a problem. And this is a list of 10 of the top articles I found on ripple current in general. Some of them have to do with lithium ion, some of them have to do with lead acid, some of them have to, a lot of them have to do with life, life power four because that was my main concern is that my life power four batteries would have an issue with my current inverters. And thank God I have more than one brand because uh, I don't know which ones have this problem. But I intend on finding out. So here are the real world effects, the key findings that we have from the low frequency current uh, ripples caused by these inverters. You get accelerated aging and capacity fade. Uh, we just went over those specs as far as the frequency. The 100 to 120 hertz seems to be one of the hot spots for ripple current and DC cycling. Frequency matters. Lower frequency ripple is worse. Okay, if we're below 300 hertz, that's bad frequency for ripple. You don't want that. <laughs> you, you, if you got above 10 kilohertz, then it's not anything to worry about. And this is because the low frequency ripple causes periodic overcharge discharge stress at the electrode level, leading to mechanical strain and side reactions. The amplitude of the ripple matters. I've said that before and I'm going to repeat it again. Even small ripple amplitudes of 5 to 10 percent of rate of rated current can accelerate degradation. Higher ripple produces significant thermal rise and rapid SEI layer growth, reducing cycle life. And if you don't know what SEI means, it's solid electrolyte interface. Thermal effects. Ripple currents generate extra heat in the cells, which amplifies degradation pathways like electrolyte breakdown and lithium plating. 
Temperature rise is a key factor. Some studies found three to five times faster capacity fade at elevated temps when Ripple was present. And then it mentions lead acid batteries, but I don't have lead acid, so good on you if you do. Uh, it's not my problem, uh, but it does affect them as well. So here is one test that I found in one of the articles and it shows they tested an inverter, which was a 16 kilowatt inverter. Okay. And it shows the little kind of red area there, low frequency ripple, about 120 Hertz. And it's causing serious damage to the batteries. But the higher frequency ripple causes mainly surface effects, which is not a problem. We need to find out if this is what's going on with our inverters, folks. So how do we detect ripple current? Well, you got to do some tests. And I personally believe that the manufacturers should be doing this testing and, and publishing their results. But us, you know, armchair quarterbacks and solar addicted folks like me, well, we're going to have to do our own tests. So Dave's going to have to buy an oscilloscope because as you see in this diagram that I had chat GPT set up uh, for me asking how could I test for ripple current and I have a long detailed description of that process but when we actually do the video on testing the inverters that I have I will go over that detailed list of the uh, actual test but basically you would set it up like this you would get your hybrid inverter and you connect this to some batteries and an oscilloscope and you would use a probe to actually monitor the charging current that is going to the batteries. And I believe you have to hit it with a load so that it could see if it, it, it causes any ripples as a result of the load being injected. Uh, but it's it's a pretty complicated little setup um, as far as the details on how to do the experiment. Like I said, I'll get into that in a video when we do the experiment. But I plan on testing my inverters, any inverter I can get my hands on to see if this ripple current exists because the battery problems that some people may be having may not be the actual cause by the battery. It could be that the inverter is hitting the battery with these ripple currents and it causes symptoms like higher temperatures in your battery, faster aging of your battery, weird BMS cutoffs. Uh, if you're having any of those experiences, you may have a problem with ripple current. Uh, I, I like a fifth of ripple. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll both have champagne. Yeah, that's good. Champagne and ripple. We're mixing together. That's my favorite. I call it champipple. <laughs> so, how do we protect our batteries from ripple current? One article I found that was on a LinkedIn page, actually, that led me to the article, said you should preheat the batteries. I'm not really sure how to do that. Filtering ripple with capacitors slash inductors can improve durability. So it sounds like filtering is the answer, especially after this next point, this next bullet point. Uh, advanced inverters with better DC bus filtering reduce ripple impact. So hopefully the inverters I have have DC bus filtering that's up to this ripple current problem. And I won't know that until I test it because nobody's talking about it. And then other practical recommendations, if you're a manufacturer, of course, you want to keep your ripple between 2 and 5% of the rated current of the Life Power 4 system. Uh, and then try to ensure thermal management, keep your batteries separated somewhat so they don't get hot too fast, things like that. You got to keep them separated. And it also mentioned that, um, that you should look into transformer-based inverters i did look into schneider at one point was thinking about going with the transformer based system but i wound up going with the high frequency hybrids and it also says you can get a high frequency hybrid with superior filtering for sensitive home energy storage setup so in my case i'm hoping that my hybrid inverters high frequency hybrid inverters are actually 
built correctly with the appropriate filtering system to prevent this ripple current problem. Hopefully keep it between two and 5% or lower, hopefully, uh, or flat as a pancake. That would be awesome. So I hope I didn't scare everybody too much. Uh, and I kind of got scared myself when I saw these articles. And I'm worried about the investment that I made into these expensive batteries, which is the most expensive part of the system, pretty much. And I wanted them to last at least long enough to get a return on my investment. So a lot of folks are not worried about ROI. I am. Uh, I'm not, I don't have an infinite amount of money. So I would like my system to run my house for the stated amount of time in the specs and uh, outlive the warranty. Uh, my batteries and my inverters, that is the plan. Um, and hopefully that plan works. So I'm gonna test my EG418K PV. I've got an EG4 Flex Boss 21 I'm about to install. And I also have my two Solark. So I will be testing for ripple current all three of those inverters. And if I can get my hands on anything more, or I can reach out to someone else who has a different inverter and get them to test that as well, I may do that and report back to you. So I hope you enjoyed the information. Hope it didn't scare you too much. Hopefully it's nothing to worry about. When we run the test, hopefully I'll find out that everything's fine and dandy. We got to set it up. We got to get an oscilloscope and we got to make this happen. Take care. Hope to see you next time on My Solar Addiction. I'm Dave Newman signing off. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed our video.